Welcome to this quick overview of Premiere Pro's stereoscopic editing with CS5 and Cineform Neo HD and 3D. This is meant to be a quick overview, also pointing you to the more detailed 60-minute video that goes over a lot of different terminology, camera rigging, and setup details. So take a look at the Adobe TV link that you see in front of you or the Dave Tech Table blog for additional information. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already got your Production Premium or Premiere Pro CS5 installed, as well as your Neo 3D or HD for your Windows or Mac. The first thing you're going to want to do when you copy your assets over to your computer from your left eye SD card and your right eye SD card is go ahead and create folders to copy them into. Again, labeling one left and one right so you can keep track of your assets at all times. Again, these are straight copies from the SD card, and you can see on this particular ABC HD folder that it's just a standard copy directly over from the card. The next step is to go ahead and start up HD Link on Windows or Remaster on the Mac and go ahead and convert these files into Cineform's award-winning codec as well as their active metadata format. So this is done in one easy step. You just click on the Convert tab, select your files or folders, and then go ahead and select the file you want. Click Open or again a set of files and click Start. Once you're done converting, you'll notice that Cineform will place those files in the same folder that the existing files were in. So let me show you where those are. So in my case, they're in my AVC HD stream folder, and they have the extension .avi. Again, they could have the extension .mov. So at this point, um, I typically move these files over to a, another folder that I call left Cineform. So I create a folder called left Cineform and then right Cineform. One extra step that I do, especially when I'm shooting with ABC HD, where the file names are exactly the same on the left card and the right card, even after I convert them in Cineform, I go ahead and name each one of them left and each one of them right. So let me show you what I mean. You can see here where each of these files has the same name as they do in the right eye folder. So to help with this, I just use Adobe Bridge to rename those files. So let me bring up Adobe Bridge and go into my left eye Cineform. I'll shift select each of these, go to Tools, Batch, Rename, and go ahead and rename each one of these, Annapolis Left or Annapolis Right. And you'll notice they now take on those new names. Again, this keeps me on track. I know exactly which assets were left and which ones were right. The next step is to go ahead and use Cineform's first light to get the frames in sync. If you're shooting with a camera like the Panasonic, then those clips are already in sync by nature of the camera. However, if you're shooting with a pair of cameras, you'll need to go ahead and sync your frame. And import your clips from each of those Cineform folders. So I'll go ahead and bring in my right eye and my left eye. And now I'm ready to start checking sync frames. The first step is to go ahead and use a visual cue. In my case, I went ahead and used a slate. And find where you want your mark and make sure you're on left eye and then click set. And go ahead and do the same for the right eye. So I'm going to click Annapolis right. Click the right eye down here and check my sync frame. After you do that for each of the clips, you're going to go ahead and select each one of these clips, go to 3D Mux, and add those to the queue, and go ahead and start that muxing. What the muxing is going to do is join both the left eye and the right eye with the active metadata into one single file. Once you've got your status complete indication, you're ready to go ahead and import your 3D file. It always puts them in the left folder, and in this case, I went ahead and converted the O1 file, and you'll notice that it went ahead and added 3D on the end of that, telling me which one is the 3D muxed file. So I'm going to go ahead and import that file, and now I'm ready to start working with my clip. One of the great things about Neo is the many different ways you can display your 3D content. To make it easy for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and just choose Anaglyph Red Cyan, but there's lots of great ways of using passive glasses and active glasses, so for more detail, make sure you check out that 60-minute video. So setting this to red cyan, one of the first things I check under 3D corrections is to make sure my point of interest, that the 3D looks exactly the way I want it to look. 
The first thing I check for in 3D corrections is my vertical alignment. That is to make sure the cameras are exactly on the same plane vertically. The easiest way to do this, believe it or not, is to go ahead and shift your horizontal. So you try to superimpose the image. You look to see if at any point, if one image is higher than the other image. Again, your point of interest. And I can see right here that my subject here, my crewman, there's actually uh, a difference in those two images. So here's where I start to adjust my vertical just to sort of get a general idea how my video is put together. And it looks like that's now perfect. So here is a great place to start in understanding your 3D settings on your particular camera for this particular shot. It looks like my vertical is 0 0.0078 off. So I might use that as a starting point for all of the particular shots on this particular scene. Again, for those of you that are new to stereo editing, you'll notice since my crewman is in full focus and the piling here and the front sail here are not, these are where your 3D is going to start to really stand out, where your eye is typically going to drift towards what's already in focus. So this is not a bad way to set up this shot. But again, you have the flexibility with active metadata to go ahead and make these adjustments at any time during the workflow, even when you're in Premiere Pro, which I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and choose 1080i60 under the Cineform tab. I'm going to go ahead and quickly import some footage and place it on the timeline. And I'll just make a couple of quick edits. At this point, you can go ahead and start to add effects as necessary. I'll go ahead and just start with a quick title. And I'll drag that on my timeline. And at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and take a look at what filters and effects I have that work with Cineform. So I'll go ahead and drag a Parallax 3D and make a quick adjustment. And you can see the Parallax effect already taking place. And you can go ahead and just preview that now. I'll go ahead and just add a couple of quick dissolves. and I'm all set for preview. At this point, we're ready for export. You have lots of different choices for exporting. Here, it looks like I'm going to export for Anaglyph, but if I want to go ahead and export for a consumer TV, I can go ahead and put that in a side-by-side -side mode. And I'm just going to go down to the taskbar here, right mouse click, and go to display type, and I'll just set it to side-by-side -side view. Go ahead and go to File, export media and I'm going to go ahead and choose MPEG-2 for Blu-ray for this example and I'm going to go ahead and set it to match attributes at high quality all the other settings should be fine and I'm going to go ahead and queue that in case I have more than one clip and at this point I'll hit start queue let's go ahead and launch Encore and set us up for Blu-ray 1920-1080 I'll put it as MPEG-2, double check that it's 1920-1080, click OK, and let's import those assets. File, Import, Asset. I'm going to import both the video and the WAV file. Quickest way to go ahead and create a timeline inside of Encore is to select your video and your audio and hit New Timeline. And as you'll see, my video comes in side by side. I'm pretty much ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and make a few settings inside of Encore. I'm going to grab the end action of the timeline and just loop it on itself. And, and I'll just set my title button that when I push the title button on my remote to go ahead and start the first play. At this point, you're ready to click Build. Check your project for errors. Looks like I have no errors and I'm ready to build. You can build either a Blu-ray disc in most cases or in some cases you might want to create a Blu-ray image. Check that your burner's online and then click build and you're ready to burn. Once your burn's done, put that in your Blu-ray player, your PlayStation 3, even a 3D player. Set your TV remote to 3D. Push the 3D button on your remote control, put on your glasses and kick back and watch your production. 
For more information, don't forget to check out the video production channel on Adobe TV, or you can check out the Dave Tech Table blog for lots of information on stereoscopic editing.